<laughs> it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And I am in the Garden of Carol in Claremont, uh, California. This is the San Diego Claremont, not the LA Claremont. Uh, I found out about this wonderful um, human being uh, through Lynn Little, Lynn Little, who is the, are you the Presidente, madam? No, no. Oh, but you're uh -huh. very active in the Claremont Garden Tour. One of my gardens was on the Claremont Tour a few years ago. This is an incredible community with some really great surprises. So if you live in the area and would be interested in being on the tour next year, please let me know in the comments. And when you see this advertised, come to it. The Claremont Garden Tour. This is one of the gardens that was featured this last May. And it is spectacular. Carol, uh, like me, does doesn't have any formal background in in succulents, gardening, horticulture, botany, design. Mm, she is it. just a DIYer. She is like us. And in 2020, folks, you heard me right, two years ago, this yeah. happened. Um, absolutely amazing. And Carol, tell us a little bit about your story. And we'll walk and, and Hannah can kind of take a look at some of these uh, incredible plantings. How did this all begin? So because of the drought, we wanted to see if we could lower the water bill. And then I started thinking about succulents and the fact that I used to work on scuba diving boats for 15 years. And you would have some undersea themes in your videos sometimes. And I thought, ooh, I wonder if I could do that. And so like Laura, there's not a drawing to start with it's just throw some mounds down where did you start what part the, of the garden did right you here start in? right here right there this is where you started and so this, this happened so i was going to do three three runs down there and then of course ran out of room when i put this one in <laughs> that's what happens when you don't yeah. make a plan and so i put the third one down there it's absolutely phenomenal. Look at these Synodenium grantii. Yeah. <gasps> this year Aren't is... Aren't they spectacular? They're from a friend of mine that lives in PB. Yeah, and Carol, you also mentioned that most of the things that you were seeing in this incredible garden were cuttings. They were free. They were Craigslist. They Craigslist, were, you know, friends, neighbors. That you haven't, you know, thrown tens neighbor, of neighbor. thousands of dollars into your plants. Even many no. of these phenomenal boulders were free or at a very deep discounted price. Off you just Craigslist. got really smart um, and you were very, very patient. You've been collecting plants and cuttings and so on and kind of getting ready for this prior to your installation, weren't yeah. you? You did have some plants that you could work with. So, well, actually we, I had about 1,500 plants when I started putting them in, in pots. <laughs> 1,500 like plants in pots. Look at, look at the little, the driftwood planting. And I, you know, this, this aloe is so oh. spectacular with this little echeveria. This is just so beautiful. Oh my goodness. So have you had any issues or problems or challenges with wildlife in your garden? Oh, you say that is a, like it might be possible. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Like uh, we were talking about the raccoon that gets into the water feature, so we have to cover it so that they can't get in. But also the squirrels and the rabbits. And we used to have like five rabbits in the yard at a time. Oh my gosh. We had squirrels come knock on the door there, but they would eat the center of the echeveria. Mm. And so... What was I'd your be, solution? Where's well, the shotgun? I actually got one of those traps, the humane traps, and I brought them down to a local park. Okay. And it was amazing. So that was probably six months ago. I got rid of seven squirrels. They're all... So I got all the families. They're all down at Tecolote there. <laughs> And we haven't seen one since. Awesome. So I know they're coming I back. I get a cat, but you yeah. you trapped it. Look at this Athona capensis. Ah! You know what? That was just a teeny wow. little piece that I got it off a succulent table. Uh, stunning. Have you so, heard of the succulent tables? Yes. Yeah, that's the another succulent option. swaps. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. And succulent tables. This yeah. Here we have a tree stump that, you know, the 
uninspired would say we need to get a stump grinder in here and deal with that but she put a pot of athona capensis on that stump and turned it into a work of art well actually that and this came from across the street. They right. chopped down. Oh, it's not even your stump. No, I put like it there. A, a, she put it there on purpose. I love you. Oh my no. gosh! And look, it was at a that bottle brush. Amazing piece. So. Oh, a bottle brush. Look at that amazing. So piece we brought of that wood. over there before we even started this. I just said I'm going to work it into the garden somehow. And here's an. You know, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The African sumac tree. Uh, and what, look how Carol has made it work with her mixed medium, you know, succulents and compatibles, plants that eat at the same restaurant. She's got <laughs> deitus lilies. She's got bromeliads tucked in there. She's got coleus. It looks like hydrangea, uh, tea plants, even a little piece of turf, <laughs> which is a nice way of saying fake grass. But see, in the right context, We're trying it's to. fun. You know, it it's just uh, it's just another element of interest in this amazing garden. This euphorbia. So I, I remember got... this the first time I saw this plant. I was blown away yeah. by the color. Yeah, a friend of mine just broke a branch off her tree. And it's, it's amazing that you can get you. a tree that you can just branch off. So these obviously aren't succulents, but these were my mother's iris. Oh, mom's and iris. And they bloom from January. I just clipped the last one. And see how sh you have integrated, which brings me to my next question, which is how do you water this garden? So it is drip. It's under... What's subterranean drip? Subterranean drip that we put in. Okay. Um, and the irises, how does that work with the succulents? Um, are these, obviously they're compatible. So what I do with the iris, I do a little more hand watering okay. with the iris, just All to right. give them a little bit more, just in the, in the summertime. Look at the beach. And My look, little beach. Wait, look at the beach. Oh gosh. You know, as you go deeper into this garden, uh, in the I anchor, Oh my goodness, Hannah, look at the Bacarnia recurvata. It's just the perfect little round foot. It's a friend of mine that gave me that one and this one. A Everything. friend gave her both of them, and this Echeveria is crazy gorgeous. This I wow. saved from a succulent table that was covered with scale. You could hardly see the plant. The Perii. Yeah. And you saved it. And that was probably, that could be three years ago. I got that early on. Do you, um, do you fertilize your succulents? I don't yet. I fertilize the other things. Okay. Because this soil is relatively new. It's a year and a half old. Oh, right. And it was, it's, a I want them soil. to stop growing. They're yes, growing too fast. thank you. Thank stop, you. Stop, stop growing. So no, uh, and then is like this perii um agave that was covered in in scale how did you treat that plant uh, i washed the heck out of it and scrubbed it okay. with a toothbrush and the soap and the, some neem oil some alcohol i'd go back and forth and back and forth and back okay. and forth All and right. finally got it do you know what brittle stars are they're a local this is not a brittle star but it's a kind of like a tillandsia. It's an huh? air, it is. It's an air plant. It's, it's a tillandsia. Plant. But it looks so cool. just like the local brittle stars. Oh, this is so, so spectacular. And look at this gorgeous thing. What is the story? Is that a rock? Is that it? <laughs> what is that? It was something that was bright blue <laughs> and it's it's man-made thing to look like coral oh that gosh. I got for nothing. And I painted it. You did. You <laughs> sure did. That is amazing. And your Aeoniums, gold star. I mean, we're in the, it's the last day of July. And look at Carol's Aeoniums. The kiwi, kiwis are crazy. Yeah. There's a girlfriend look of mine that. that just kept giving me these. And it's just, I can't believe these things are free. They're just, yeah. and oh, they're so man. prolific. So this was my favorite part, but it got overgrown. <laughs> so this is my next spot to redo it. It's just well, a Well, you've big. got some cotyledon uh, long, long fingers, fingers that are so compact. I'm so impressed because mine just go floppy. Oh. Um, yours aren't flopping. But see how she's got the kiwi kind of bracing the... Uh, the long fingers kind of almost holding them up. And then also it's how you planted them on the mound too, to, you know, to, to kind of work against gravity. And that combo with, of the sticks on fire with that blue is just absolutely yeah, when gorgeous. It, when they turn red, it is Ugh. stunning, stunning. And yeah. these aeoniums here, look at these, Han. Yeah. 
These what were these also free? Yep. Those look like yep, yep, uh, yep. well, those are purple aeoniums, but look at these Zwartkopf and you can <laughs> see the difference. We call the Zwartkopf the black rose, so you can see the difference in color, how these are far more wine colored and those are almost black. So many fabulous aeoniums in this garden. So this is the area that I haven't done anything to for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So these were planted as little twiglets from a girlfriend of mine. Not Yikes. twiglets anymore, They're are they? Not. So did you bring in amended topsoil from the rock yard? Um, the Where'd you get first, your dirt? So, it's, you know, thank you for saying you need so much more than you, than think, you, you think you need. You need. So yeah. first I thought five, cubic yards and I'll have extra for potting and sure stuff. Sure you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you kept saying more, more, more. So I said, okay, 10. I ordered 10, brought it in. And that did that in half. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to do another 10. So there's We're a total to 20, of 23, 23 cubic yards. 23 cubic yards and amended topsoil. Seeds. Topsoil. That's why she has such bodacious plants is, is the amendment in that topsoil, yeah. which is what we like to get. So we don't need to fertilize um, I never have. The only thing I fertilized recently has been cactus that are turning a little yellow and I had great success uh, yeah. with that. Um, oh, can I do a little plug for yes, please. great soils up in San Marcos? Great soils. So San you can Marcos. have any soil made any way you want. So my second wow. 10 cubic yards is from them and they did more of a succulent mix. Is it expensive? It's like $44 a cubic yard. That but, is not expensive. But getting down here. Is, <laughs> right, if you have you them, know. there's delivery too on yeah. top of that. But see, um, we are, oh, your we... ball. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's wow. It's glass, it's glass. It's glass, it's so beautiful. And this aloe vera, the maligned aloe vera. I talk about this, how I love this plant as a specimen. Yeah. And this is why. I noticed this from way up on the, uh, way up on the deck. Look at that bloom coming up. Uh, Carol, you are such a visionary and you are such an artist that you were able oh, to construct thanks. this. And this is the sign of a phenomenal designer. You'll have to give me some of your cards. <laughs> um, I'm sure you, everyone's gonna want you now. Uh, is knowing what to plant where in order to manage the growth. This, co this um, uh, Cal and Coe Orgialis copper spoons Holy crap. And then there's a Bayerensis behind There's two it. different there's ones There's two different there. kinds. So, and then a, yeah. it looks like a Bainsey eye. Yeah. Yeah. All given to me. All free, people. All free. Thank you, Mitch, for the Bainsey eye. Thanks, Mitch. And then some of these boulders you actually purchased, but at a discounted so, rate. So these three were the ones that cost $40. 40 bucks for all three? <laughs> all three. Wow. It was just somebody moving it out of their house. Wow. But they are so much bigger than they even look because yeah. they're buried in there. And being a DIYer, um, Carol's wonderful Greg, whose name is Patrick, um, <laughs> moved these, jerry-rigged these into place okay, and risked life and limb to do it. Look at these graptos amongst this. This is Portolacaria minima. I talk about this one as an alternative to the Afro variegata. It's just a little smaller. I love how this is what's happening here. I love <laughs> this. And the mother of thousands, broken pot. Is that a yeah. Cameroni eye? It is, and it was red until just recently. Right, so and it's I, time to dig it out. I tried to bring it up and it's- It's stuck. I, I to, pff, Darn, I'll have remember, to dig it up. This is a bush that. aloe, so it yes. is going to oh, do I've, this. I do, like every three months, I dig up my aloe. Good, yeah, it's time so to dig that out, Darn. cut it off, we're and on, stick it back in the ground. <laughs> it's my neighbor. Hi, Don. Hi, Don. <laughs> um, and what a masterful, masterful display with this avocado, how it is its own thing. We didn't try to underplant it. It's just alone and being there's avocados. an avocado tree. <laughs> this uh, gold star, absolute Aww. gold star. And did you get that perspective, Hannah, of the shade garden? and that incredible dry stream with all the mix. Um, oh my gosh. He can't. Uh-oh. Come here, sweetie. 
Come oh, here, sweetie. Dear. Come on. And now come we on. have, we just, come on. hi. Come um, on. That's okay. Hey, I Daisy. I mean, it's all good in the hood. What uh, a good dog. Daisy, yeah, come on. Yeah, all the jade come on, Daisy. We'll have to ask come on. Carol about Thank you, the jade. Daisy. Um, and it looks yeah. like there's some fire glass Yeah, she's in video. There. Oh, okay. But see, guys, okay. look. She's see you later. Like Make sure it closes. Five different kinds of rock in this dry stream. And it's absolutely phenomenal. Was this jade, uh, were the jade rocks free too? Claremont, yes. I took them off of somebody's yard, they said. Take them away. Uh, you haven't huh? walked? Yeah, let's there. go. There's let's enough. check. Tell us all about this. This looks like Garden so of Death. Is slash. this the funniest little toy bridge? This but is so But from the cute. perspective of up there, it's perfect. It is perfect. If we had had a great big thing, it wouldn't have looked right. You're it's right. True. You have such an eye for scale. <laughs> oh, and then here we are in the shade. This oh, is a totally different good? microclimate. And look at Carol's fountain of oh, splendor here. So wow. this has a fun story. It's plastic. Okay, it's plastic, peeps. <laughs> because it just can't move things, you know? They're just too heavy. And so I, <laughs> I, this is the second version. The first version, after it rained in the wintertime, the whole thing collapsed. <laughs> so I got to redo it. Okay. And the bottom is just filled now with sand and DG and rocks and things to support it. So, got it. So, so far, so good. Yeah. And see, so just a tip for you if you get plastic thing like this and you... Thank you. Get, you. Yeah, it doesn't Weigh hold it up. Down. <laughs> Weigh it down. And, you know, microclimates at work. Some people are... Um, are under the misunderstanding that succulents won't grow in shade when in fact they love it mm -hmm. bright indirect or bright direct light is really all these plants need yeah. and there's good airflow through here too then carol's propagation <laughs> station over here look at that where she's got all of her cuttings uh, that she's rooting and then these just you work into the garden don't you yeah. as needed and we're going to do the front yard but we're going to do it a little bit more minimal minimalistic, minimalistic. And smart yeah well have this to is a lot of work that won't we <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is a tremendous amount of work but see just all of the mixed you know the mixed medium and the shade and the detail look at this string of pearls <laughs> right so gorgeous oh and the Senecio fish hooks. Look at that. It is. It's. It's just seven, touching eight, the ground now. It's like now. eight feet. Eight feet, probably. I'm waiting to see how long oh. it'll go. And what's the plan with these wicker chairs? So, I know this is silly, but this is a family heirloom. Why is it outside? You say? Because my cousin, thank you, Beth, left it outside in Connecticut for three years, and it got destroyed, and nobody wanted it but me because we used to sit in it. My parents used to sit in it. My grandparents used to sit in it. My great grandparents used wow. to sit in it. So, you know, it's just sitting inside in the house, nothing. So I thought, I'll just, I'll just put it here because nobody's gonna want it after me. So this way I get to see it every day. You do, you get yeah. to see it every day. Yeah. And how long do you spend in the garden, Carol? Oh, way too much time. <laughs> I'm retired, so this is what I do. So you just come out here and putter. Yeah. This is a pink jasmine. Um, this variety of jasmine blooms late in the winter and into yeah. the very early spring. So you get the flowers early. And it's one of my favorites for quick spread. It and does And you can cut so it back quick. and it doesn't care. So our plan is to get rid of all this and make a house shed that it's a real shed, not for plants and things, but for all our stuff. And then I have the window boxes and the oh, plants and things sweet. right back here. How so, fun. Yeah, we can't wait. That's the next project. Oh, Brugmansia, love-hate relationship with yes. this girl. Three cuttings from friends and my sister. We got wow. different, different colors, different stuff. Oh, wow, fun. And then more aloes just waiting for their debut, waiting their for a opportunity. Home. And what, pray tell, is this? An oh, olive tree olive from bears. Patrick's kids that live in Italy. So we have to have an olive tree. And Carol's got the space. Oh, and then look, she's got food growing back here. And then all of her propagates and cuttings underneath. <gasps> this is just a dream. And it looks like you've got grapes over there on the oh, fence. 40 feet of grapes. 40 feet of grapes. This is just an absolute DIY dream come true. So Flectranthus. this, it really seems to keep the gophers away. Yes, they hate the smell. Yeah, so mm -hmm. do I. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, that's why, see, that's why it's back here, guys. It doesn't smell the greatest. And I'm, I'm starting to put, every time I water it, you know, you get that smell. Yep. And I'm starting to put it down there. Yeah. Too, to Make to a buffet down yes. there so that they yes. get their bellies full or they are repelled before yeah. they have the opportunity to get up here. So you haven't had problems with gophers? I don't know if I say there that has, too loud. I know, and I don't want to say that there has not been a gopher in these mounds yet. But wow. every the whole Fantastic. yard has really heavy duty weed cloth. Oh, heavy duty weed cloth. Good to know. And look at the dolphin. <laughs> How cute is that? Hello, wow. little baby. So yeah, there just is a total coral reefy vibe going through this whole space. And it is such an amazing. Do you guys realize how amazing this is? This was Carol came up with this in real time. There was no drawing, there was no plan, and she was working with free materials. And she still managed to create a themed garden with free crap. So if <laughs> That's Carol can it. do it, right? <laughs> free crap. Free crap. <laughs> and I mean, this is just an absolute paradise. In full sun, we've got the canyon back there. You yeah. probably get some coastal influence, mm -hmm. maybe some breezes. Uh, it's still a little bit cloudy, which is good for the plants, but I suppose you'll probably have a little bit of uh, burning in September, possibly. So October. there's some aloe, I mean some, uh, yeah, the kiwis have gotten some burns. I don't there's see any some... sunburst, aeonium you know, sunburst. Yeah, I, I had one right there and it bloomed. Oh, it bloomed. Well, Without putting anything off. Hmm, I may have to just show up one day with a sunburst for Carol. Cause so I, I have. That would be phenomenal in here. I have some a crested sunburst. Two you crested You have two sunburst. crested. Not as big as yours. <gasps> Fantastic. Yeah, and then look at Carol's got pots up here. She's got her entourage. <laughs> uh, you know, look at the bougainvilleas just spotting around the garden. Just, it's just absolutely amazing. And I cannot thank you enough for allowing us to come. Carol has probably been spending many, many hours out here in preparation for this tour for all of you. No, it so, always looks this good without yeah, the leaves. You just don't even have to, yeah, it just looks this good on its own. But be sure and uh, let Carol know how, how much you appreciate her and her garden in the comments and be inspired and get out there and create your own dream. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with Car Carol in San Diego Claremont and your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys. <laughs>